Hey, Andre Chumley here, aka We Are Ants to Them. And just going to share a few ideas, a few tips uh, on synthesis, specifically modular synthesis. Um, the things I'm going to talk about apply to hardware, but also software, VCV or my rack or anything like that. And it also applies to really any um, music that you're making, whether you're using a synthesizer or not. Um, there's a lot of debate. Should you have a mixer outside, inside? We go back and forth on that. I kind of split the difference. This one's kind of small. Uh, I've seen mixers that take up half the case. This one is um, six channels in. But I do something a little tricky with it. I use a couple sub-mixers. So I have very small mixers that I have spread about the place. For instance, I have a drum mixer. I'll bring that up. And in this little drum mixer, I've got three little voices. So that means I can really fine tune. Change the drum sounds a bit and bring them in and out. And I can pan them, which is another cool thing about a mixer. A good mixer should have panning, should have some sort of effect send. I've got some effects going here, so if we turn that up, I've got um, some uh, delay. So you can uh, you can see the possibilities there. I'm gonna keep that on a, a nice reverb. So um, by by submixing it lets me get 12 channels happening actually. So I've got the drums in in a little submix. I got another submix over here that's got this little sequence happening. It's also got some radio noise. I often use a little AM radio, so you can get some strange sounds. After all, radio provides some of the kind of interference frequencies and white noise and strange stuff like that that you can play around with and that you can um, record and sample, you know. Um, I just trapped that radio signal. Now I can mess with it. This is just a little a thing by 2HP called Freeze that lets you trap whatever's coming in. I can trap those drums. So, um, so kind of two tips in one there. I think it's great to have, I mean, you can just mess with that. Put it onto some, put it into some effects. And, um, you know, Do a lot with just that. So there's a couple couple things there. Putting in some external sound, whether it's a radio or um, anything you might have, a little uh, field recorder, anything like that. Um, bringing your beats in and out. Make your own, figure out how to get some rails and check that out. Look online for different ways to do that. Um, but also, you can, um, you know, this you can really save a lot of time just getting a case. This case has the power in it. It's got uh, stereo outs. It's got um, what's called a CV bus. So that means I can 
malt up to four different signals. In other words, I could put a clock or a, a CV or a gate or, or a trigger of some sort and duplicate it several times across the board. I also have input and output, stereo output. And right now I've got another, um, a Nord drum is what you're hearing there. And I'm triggering that with my clocks and bringing it back into the system. So um, Intelligel, uh, Make Noise, Pittsburgh, uh, Behringer Moog, a lot of, a lot of um, manufacturers make different uh, cases. And uh, do the math on it. You might spend just as much putting all the power in and putting inputs and outputs and making the case really safe and secure enough. You, you have some serious investments in there that you're dragging around. So you might you want to think about what's going in there. I tend to use white and black cables for clocks. Not exclusively, but I, I, I tend to do that. That way I can always find a clock that's happening. And I tend to use other colors for um, audio. I tend to use purple and pink for drums and hi-hats and stuff. And, you know, you can figure out any kind of scheme you like, but anything that reduces your um, sense of, of kind of going, wait, what's over here? Um, I also label stuff. A lot of people think that's cheesy, but, hey, if I look down here, I know right away there's the drums, there's the other mixer. There's my um, percussion uh, uh, sequencer, etc. I also do something called a wild card. I keep one channel and I find one cable that's kind of unique. This is a, a fabric wrapped um, cable. And so I know that whatever I do with this cable. I can grab it and kind of. I just have this cable that can end up anywhere and uh, give me right away a way to send stuff into um, that channel, no matter. So I have, I call it the wild card and uh, let's leave it over here with some noise. Always good to have a source of noise as well, um, as you know, don't have to tell you that noise you can make hi-hats you can make all kinds of stuff being able to put external audio into your system i use something called ears and ears enables you to um to take uh, uh an external signal and just uh it's got a microphone in and a 10 db input so you can do things like that Do whatever you like, but this way you're getting the audio into the system, and you could put some echo on it. You could do some uh, treatments. Suddenly you have a texture. I can put this radio into that as well and get this kind of thing. So this little thing is um, a way to put little recordings. This is my tip top. It has a little SD mini card in it. However, a lot of uh, companies make something like that. 2HP has one, um, you know, all kinds of companies. It's very simple. It's just a playback machine with an SD card. But what's cool is you can play it play the pitch keep re-triggering also you can of course trigger it from a uh, clock
can really do some interesting things when you have a little playback. If you have um, something that takes a, a, a gate signal, for instance. So I've got this oscillator here, this Mr. On, which is a really cool car plus strong um, module from Make Noise. And I'm triggering it manually. Very beautiful, playable. And what's cool is um, you can put uh, multiple clocks into it. So if I was uh, putting get the idea so it um, responds to triggers however you can f flip the script and um, you're not supposed to send uh, well it's not expecting uh, pulses and sawtooth and sine waves you can send those in <laughs> And as you lower the frequency in this case, really, if you slow an LFO, uh, an oscillator down, of course, you're getting an LFO if, if that oscillator allows. So suddenly I've got, let's send it. So what am I doing there? I'm just using um, pitch instead of a gate. And I get something unique. And when I go up in frequency, audio rate and you can do some unique things so what's the idea there just break the rules put a gate where um, it's expecting a uh, CV put a CV where it's expecting a gate just kind of mess around with the uh, expected realities echo and reverb gotta have it all right you know um, I just think it's one of the classic tones of synthesis and um, you can't go wrong making sure that you've got some really cool reverb happening. And, and have your sound just kind of disappear into. Thank you so much, and um, hopefully you pick something up from that happy patching.